Howdy folks and all the wonderful subscribers. It's me again, your chief marine mate Edo. Once again, thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button, notification bell, and click like if it pleases you. Let's begin. So our topic for today is about LNG, liquefied natural gas. We won't be discussing uh, the uh, cargo operational procedure or any other related cargo operations on board, we will be only talking about the whole LNG concept and everything that is related about it. So with no much further ado, let's start. Okay. What is LNG? LNG is the acronym for liquefied natural gas that has been made over millions of years of transformation of organic materials such as plankton and algae. Natural gas is 95% uh, methane, which is actually the cleanest fossil fuel. The combustion of natural gas primarily emits water vapor and small amount of carbon dioxide. This property means that associated carbon dioxide emissions are just about 30 to 50% lower than those produced by other combustible fuels. Now, when we are talking about fossil fuels, uh, these are, for example, the crude oil, now, the raw crude oils that has been mined from the seabed or deep down to the earth, uh, from the earth's surface, underground, and this has been refined into refineries. Uh, they call it uh, cracking, fractionation and distillation, and this crude oil will, of course, yield uh, different types of petroleum products. One of those is, for example, is your fuels, your gasoline your petroleum, your petrochemicals, including your wax, floor wax, as they call it. And of course, the end product or the uh, the um, list on the last uh, product that you could uh, take out out of it is this called uh, bitumen asphalt, the one that is used in the roads where you are traveling. Right, let's go back to LNG. Now, the typical properties of LNG LNG is simply natural gas that has been cooled to its liquid state at atmospheric pressure of minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit or equivalent of negative 162 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. Uh, when we say atmospheric pressure, that is about 14.7 psi or pounds per inch. Or if you want to have uh, another unit uh, measurement, it's about 1.013 bar. Right? So, LNG is commonly 95% to 95% methane. Methane, uh, its chemical formula is C, H4, carbon and hydrogen. Right? So, we'll get back to that later. And, of course, with the remainder, a combination of ethane, propane, and butane, and other heavier gases. And, of course, LNG is transported at ambient pressures. When you say ambient pressures again, we are talking about the pressures on the surrounding environment where the vessel is sailing on. Say, for example, it's in an area in upper waters, like in the Pacific Ocean, and you have an atmospheric pressure of about 14.7 psi. Liquefying natural gas vapor, which reduces the gas into a practical size for transportation and storage, it reduces the volume that the gas occupies to about 600 times. So as you can see, uh, this ball right now that I am holding, if I shrink it, it will be like this one, in a liquid state. All right? LNG is considered a flammable liquid. That means to say, if there's a source of ignition, and with the right mixture of oxygen and carbon, or the vapor from the methane, it of course is going to produce fire, or worse, explosion. LNG colorless, odorless, and non-toxic. LNG vapor typically appears as a visible white cloud because it's called temperature condenses water vapor present in the atmosphere. I will show you a little bit of demonstration uh, later on. And of course, we have this lower and upper flammability limits of methane, which is about 5.5% to 14% by volume at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And as I mentioned earlier, LNG is odorless, colorless, non-corrosive, 
and non-toxic. Non-toxic, literally, if I dip a cracker or a cookie into a liquefied natural gas, then if I eat that cookie, after dipping it, of course, I have to warm it a little bit because I don't want to have a frost bite. Remember, I mentioned it has about negative 162 degrees Celsius and I don't want to have a frost bite on my mouth. So, literally, I could eat the cookie and it won't uh, kill me or, or it won't poison me because it's non-toxic. However, as with any gaseous material besides air and oxygen, the natural gas vaporizes from LNG can cause asphyxiation, meaning to say, if you are in uh, within an un, uh, meaning to say, if you are within an unventilated space and an enclosed space or confinement, if you inhale a volume of that, then of course you will be asphyxiated, meaning to say, it replaces the oxygen in your lungs and definitely you will be asphyxiated and you cannot breathe anymore, right? And of course also, if uh, there's a sudden uh, vapor emission of L from the LNG, from the liquid itself, and that is very cold as well. You could cause a thermal or frostbite in your system, especially your lungs. As of this moment, LNG shipping industry has an excellent safety record. No shipboard fatalities over the life of the industry associated with cargo. No major losses of cargo and only one minor LNG onboard fire. I think it, that was a lightning strike near a bent riser, cargo tanks, not affected of course. And there has been some grounding resulting to major hull breaches, but there is not enough without, uh, I mean to say, there was no cargo loss. And uh, of course, LNG is transported in different ways, uh, at sea, at land, and through pipelines. The majority of which, the bulk LNG of course, are transported through uh, the shipping. And we have different types of uh, ship that is capable of carrying LNG. Of course, the major uh, tanks that are capable of carrying this one in terms of design is, is the so-called uh, the uh, spherical type and the most popular now is the so-called membrane type. And we have other type of uh, LNG uh, containment system. Now, uh, I'll show you this uh, containment system as we go on. Now, let's uh, have a little bit of uh, glossary and terminology. Import terminal. Facility that has the capability of accepting and storing LNG from overseas. And of course, the other ter terminology is liquid function. That's the process of cooling natural gas to minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit until it becomes a uh, liquid. Now, uh, if I will give uh, an uh, example of that is that uh, assuming uh, I have a balloon or a plastic that is capable of containing this uh, vapor of LNG. If I sprinkle this with uh, a very cold uh, cryogenic uh, liquid, like for example, uh, nitro liquid nitrogen, that gas or vapor inside this balloon will turn into a liquid. And that's why I mentioned a while ago that uh, the ratio of a volume of a vapor of LNG is about 600 is to 1. Meaning to say, if I have a 600 cubic feet of volume of vapor of natural gas it that is uh, liquefied it will turn into a one cubic feet of liquid not gas anymore 600 cubic feet for example of volume of vapor will be turned into a one cubic feet of liquid and that's a lot easier to transport at the same time, you are transporting bulk, big volumes of bulk liquids on board ships. You have already a cost saving, uh, very effective, and at the same time, you have more volumes and tonnets and tonnets of liquid cargo that can be transported. The other terminology is uh, liquid function plant. Of course, I mentioned earlier, um, they are carried in ships. Some ships doesn't have any liquid function plant. So, of course, naturally, as the, tra as the vessel uh, travels into sea, it boils up. I mean to say, uh, by uh, the law of thermodynamics, warmer region goes to colder region. And since we are talking about cryogenic cargo like LNG, which is about negative 
260 Fahrenheit or negative 162 degrees centigrade. That's very cold inside the tanks. Now, and as the law impl uh, as the law impl implies, warmer region goes towards the re uh, colder region, and thereby, of course, the liquid that is already cold will become a little bit warmer, and it boils up. And once it boils up, it yields vapor. And that vapor, if you have a ship fitted with reliquary function system, then that vapor should be able to take out the vapor from the tank, put it into the processing system of the reliquary function, and reliquify it back to the tanks. If it's not fitted with a uh, uh, reliquary function uh, system, then the boil up will go to the engine room which is utilized for the engine as a fuel. Again, this is the type of uh, dominating LNG cargo containment principles, which is the most design and the membrane type. Others is the uh, GTT Mark III, and CS1, and the number 96. And uh, believe it or not, if I have this uh, small piece of paper right now, and I fold it into uh, maybe uh, four, now, if you could see this, the thickness of that uh, sheet I am uh, holding right now, or this sheet of paper that I'm holding right now, is about 0.7 millimeter to 1.2 millimeter, millimeters. That's how thick this stainless steel or aluminum or alloy or invariable uh, combination of nickel and zinc and alloy for the containment system and uh, it's very uh, ductile that's why they utilize most of this kind of steels because if you utilize uh, a mild steel or a regular steel and it is uh, exposed or submerged into a liquefied natural gas cargo then it will become brittle and literally you could break it like a glass but with stainless steel, for example, it is ductile. Its uh, properties uh, will, uh, of course, uh, adapt, and that the stainless steel doesn't uh, become brittle. Hence, it will be capable of containing the cargo for a longer time than those of the mild steel. Right. Now, some of you might be thinking about boiling point. The boiling point, of course, of LNG is negative 162 degrees Celsius, as I mentioned earlier. And now, uh, most uh, layman's uh, thinking, when they uh, think of boiling, they think as if it's uh, always hot. Now, boiling uh, or liquid or uh, the boiling point temperature of liquids are different in its uh, every substance. So, for example, the boiling point of water is about 100 degrees Celsius. Now, that's hot, of course. But the boiling point of LNG is negative 162. It's already boiling, right? Now, the term boil is just like a bubble. It boils, but it could be very hot and could be very extremely cold. So, to give you another analogy for that, if I go to the top of Mount Everest and I will boil water, that water will boil not 100 degrees Celsius, but it will boil about 72 degrees Celsius. So it's a little bit warmer, or I mean colder, than in the sea level when you are boiling it because it will boil it to 100 degrees Celsius. So uh, that is what we call boiling point or the physical properties of different substances. Liquid. Uh, Nitrogen uh, is, uh, I think, it's negative 196, and some other uh, gases, uh, they have a different boiling point. Propane, for example, is about negative 42. Butane is uh, ranging from uh, about negative 5 to positive 9 degrees Celsius. Oxygen, if I'm not mistaken, is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it could be like, uh, I think it's negative 82. Well, I think that's is carbon dioxide, or liquid uh, uh, carbon dioxide. That's what we call the uh, yeah, liquid, liquid carbon dioxide. So uh, there you go. Uh, you'll be able to understand a little bit about LNG. And now, uh, what is the main purpose of LNG? What is the usage 
Of course, as I mentioned earlier in the definition, LNG is a clean fuel. It's a clean fossil fuel. It is now utilized as a source of power for uh, electrical uh, power plant, the electric uh, city uh, provider. It's also a source of uh, fuel for heating in household and cooking. And nowadays, they are utilized as a fuel for ships. Uh, it's uh, now used as a bunker fuel and also uh, as a fuel for some uh, vehicles already. There are now uh, some, some uh, models and I think they are already being used in some countries like uh, transport buses. They are utilizing uh, liquefied natural gas as a uh, fuel. Of course, it's not the, li the liquid that actually is uh, being used as a means of fuel to burn it, but it's the vapor that uh, is actually uh, yielded from that liquid. It's uh, the vapor that burns, not the liquid, right? So, just like uh, your cooking uh, propane or bottled uh, LPG in a tank in your household, it's liquid inside, but once you open the bulb, what comes out of it is not liquid. It's gas or vapor. Now, I mentioned a while ago that uh, LNG is uh, odorless. While in uh, uh, reality, it's actually, you can smell it. It's smelly. And why? Because of the so-called mercaptans. These are actually... Uh, uh, what we call odorant. Uh, they are additives. They are mixed with in this uh, kind of cargo or gases or liquid so that uh, when it yields uh, vapor, you can detect it with your nose because it's colorless and naturally it's odorless. If they don't put this mercaptans or odorant, then if there's a leak, I hope it won't happen, if there's a leak in your uh, household, if you are uh, being supplied with natural gas, it's being used for uh, cooking or heating, then uh, without those uh, additives that is being applied or uh, mixed with that kind of cargo or gas, then you won't be able to smell it. And uh, there's a chance, a great chance that you might just feel uh, dizzy and suddenly you will uh, faint and there is an uh, so-called asphyxiation because that gas can replace the whole area with uh, this kind of uh, asphyxiation gas and that would replace the oxygen and how it is being transported and how it's being um, extracted beneath the earth of course the following video right now i'm gonna show you uh, the whole uh, procedure of how this natural gas is taken out from the seabed. So the next few mom moments I'll show you a little bit of animation and explain them in details. Okay, uh, I'll give you an overview of the uh, processes of LNG, how it's being extracted uh, from the beneath the earth, the seabed underground. Of course, uh, so in this example of this diagram, as you can see, we have the so-called reservoir and uh, from the surface of the uh, ocean down below to the seabed and of course it's extracted uh, underground so naturally as I mentioned earlier uh, this uh, natural gas uh, develop over time uh, to uh, the so-called planktons and algae and uh, naturally uh, it form a natural gas in this reservoir this is different uh, with crude oil crude oils is the what we call the black oil they are raw crude oils which are has to be refined and of course it has to be fractionated, uh, distilled and of course in the so-called cracking processes so that's why we have a lot of byproducts uh, such as petroleum and many other things of course propane and butane also can uh, come out of crude oil uh, as a byproduct now, but majority of LPGs that we have in our uh, household right now uh, came from the so-called natural gases now from this reservoir as you can see uh, we are extracting the uh, natural gas but this natural gas of course uh, has uh, a mixture of the yellow one as you can see here is uh, the natural gas but uh, it has also uh, MEG or so-called monoethyl uh, glycol monoethylene glycol 
and of course water and some condensate and of course you don't want to have all those in one system because you won't be able to utilize that of course some equipments can take in those kind of uh, natural gas immediately uh, just a little bit of separating the water but the other uh, substances can be fe fed into a system and they use it but uh, for uh, fuel and other uh, uh, industrial usage uh, you have to take out the natural gas 95% uh, and above so there it goes into the so-called slug catcher now this is slug catcher as you can see it's where you separate of course this uh, arriving well stream it passes among um, this natural gas the condensate and the monoethylene glycol and water will be separated into these slug catchers and again we go back in here it will go down into so-called the uh, pretreatment now the pretreatment is uh, you have to take out the uh, co2 carbon dioxide of course you have to uh, separate it and of course you have to dehydrate it of course and the gas is saturated with water which must be removed to prevent ice forming right you don't want to have ice forming because uh, take note it contains water and once this is pre-cooled the water will become solid and you don't want to be in your system so you have to dehydrate it and you also need to remove the mercury there are a lot of mercury in the in this gas uh, so uh, it has to be removed as well now uh, if you were thinking what will happen to the co2 of course uh, i'll show you later uh, basically i can show it right now let's go back to overview as you can see this uh, there is this um, co2 right now this one you see the carbon dioxide is actually being injected back to where it came from why well we have already a lot of co2 emissions in our atmosphere and uh, we don't want that to uh, have an additional uh, volume of co2 being added in the atmosphere because as they call it we have the so-called problem of global warming so they injected it back all right so that's how it is now again uh, after the pre, pre treatment i'm sorry it goes to a fractionation and this fractionation of course uh, it will separate the um, natural gas from the other gases which i mentioned earlier that you can have ethane and propane and butane out of 95 percent methane the ch4 they are also propane and butane and ethane and this will become your lpg so uh from there it separates and it goes to the storage tank for your LPG. Now, for the natural gas, it has to be pre-cooled, right? Of course, the same thing with the LPG uh, production. It has to be converted into a liquefied petroleum gas. And that is, of course, another uh, discussion when we, we talk about LPGs in the next uh, video. But uh, we just skip that for now. For the LNG, it will go to a so-called LNG production. It will be pre-cooled. Now they utilize liquid nitrogen. Basically, uh, by thermodynamics, uh, it's, uh, the principle of extracting the heat, uh, which is the natural gas, it's not yet that cold. It's about 13 degrees Celsius. It's already cold because it came from beneath the earth. But to bring it, it to its boiling point temperature, which is about negative 162 degrees Celsius or negative 163, you have to extract that heat further and the way to do it is uh, they utilize liquid nitrogen and uh, by law of physics if you uh, subjected or some uh, put it into a cargo uh, heat exchanger as if you wash the liquid that passes inside the pipe i mean the, the gas that passes inside the pipe you wash it outside with a negative 196 temperature of uh, liquid nitrogen that heat will be extracted uh, i think they call it as latent heat of vaporization and so what happens is that it turns to a liquid fied state it becomes liquid so now you don't have a natural gas but you have now have a so-called liquefied natural gas so what comes next is that from this uh, LNG production, just like the LPG, you send it to your so-called LNG storage tank, right? 
But of course, other than that, uh, you can see also in the diagram that uh, some of the substances that, that went in into the slug catcher are like the uh, condensate, which is, uh, it can be reprocessed, and they put it also into another tank. While the rest, like the uh, methyl uh, monoethylene uh, glycol, uh, it's an anti uh, They also send it back and utilize it as uh, anti -priest. No, You don't want to have a uh, hydrate formation of uh, water because uh, you are now uh, using, uh, I mean, liquefying this uh, natural gas and it's negative 163. So this water will turn into solids if you don't uh, have this antifreeze into that uh, system uh, processing so there you go once it's uh, been uh, stored into its respective tanks the lng and the lpgs then you can now use it for transport and of course that's the ship that we have been i have been showing you a while ago and of course from one point to another like this one it came from europe and then it went to the united states now uh, there are so many uh, sources of LNGs like in the Arabian uh, Peninsula uh, like uh, for example Qatar and many Arab countries and also uh, we have some uh, in the Asia, uh, Asia like in, in Indonesia and also uh, there are of course uh, LNG sources in uh, Africa like in Nigeria and other uh, countries. Right. So this is basically the whole uh, overview of uh, an LNG system so uh, as I mentioned earlier it can be transported via uh, ship that is capable of carrying these cargos but at the same time uh, same time uh, they can be delivered through pipelines and uh, compressed natural gas system so about the bulk of it are being carried on board liquefied natural gas carrier right so there you go we have a whole overview of how uh, LNG is being processed and as a summary, LNG is safe, LNG is non-toxic, LNG is uh, of course uh, cryogenic cargo which is about negative 162, uh, negative 162 degrees Celsius or minus 200, uh, 260 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, again, uh, thank you uh, for uh, listening and watching. I hope uh, this gives you some insight. There are of course a lot of uh, sources and mat materials that you could uh, found uh, in uh, different uh, movie or YouTube's uh, videos and other articles in the internet. You'll find them accordingly and uh, you'll be able to see a lot of information regarding LNG. This is just a summary about how LNG works.